So I've been saying this for months now, and it has been met with resistance each and every last step of the way, but Anthem's communication strategy is pretty brilliant. Now, before you take to the comment section and say that I've lost you already in the first sense of this video, just please hear me out. Anthem's communication strategy is working, and it's proven itself time and time again. Not just with this game, but other games, and we'll get into that in just a second. Now, for the most part, I'm sure you all are saying to yourselves, what communication strategy? They have been fairly silent on Twitter. We only get official communications from them in the form of community cortexes that admittedly happen weekly. And we haven't heard any major information about Anthem 2.0 slash next. And for that matter, they haven't even acknowledged its existence yet. How do we know what they are doing, or how do we know they are doing anything at all for Anthem's future after Ice Tide? Well, there's a lot to unpack in this video, so we're going to start with Anthem 2.0 slash next, and then move on to Anthem's communication strategy that was, as I previously mentioned, implemented by several games that had less than stellar launches. And they've actually managed to turn around big time to where they have one of the best communities out there. But like I said, first and foremost, Anthem 2.0. As most of you know by now, Jason Schreier, the infamous gaming journalist, managed to leak that Anthem 2.0 slash next was in development. Now, this was a few months ago, and it has yet to be acknowledged by Bioware. I can't tell you how many times that I see on Twitter where Anthem will make an official post, or even AJ, Jesse, Caden, anyone, any of the community managers, will make an official post, and it is instantly met with, Major Anthem game update soon? Details about Anthem major game update? Question mark, question mark? Now don't get me wrong, I applaud Jason Schreier for posting that article. It gave me hope as a Bioware fan and an Anthem fan and, you know, as an Anthem content creator. But why has Bioware still yet to acknowledge its existence? Why haven't they made an official post about it? Well, for one, I don't know any gaming company in the world that validates leaks. If a new game title is leaked, they deny it, or better yet, they don't say anything. And this is especially true of major updates and revamps and what have you, because for the most part they want it to be a surprise, or I know, this is wild, they'll announce it or talk about it when they want to not because of a leak. And plus, Bioware has a little bit of experience with talking about something too far out. And yes, I'm talking about Anthem's launch, but more specifically, I'm talking about everything that led up to Anthem's launch, about a whole year's worth of communications and ask me almost anything about Anthem's. The problem is it got expectations way too high, and they were talking about features that some of them didn't even make it into the game. Hype just kept on building and building and building to the point where when the game did release, we were all so hyped up about what it could have been that we were so disappointed with what we got upon release. And no, I'm not talking about the server stability, bugs, issues, what have you. I mean just flat out features and functionality of the game. I guess my point is, Bioware will talk about Anthem 2.0 slash next whenever they are going to do it and whenever they are good and ready for it. If it wasn't for Jason Schreier's article, we wouldn't even know about it, and that's kind of intentional. It all feeds into that Anthem communication strategy that I've been hailing as brilliant, and it's because it actually works, and it has proven to work time and time again. Now, as some of you may know, I was a double major in college in both communications and business, but primarily I focused on strategic communication within businesses, and of course communication theories to best craft a strategy plan for a business. That being said, Anthem's communication strategy at the beginning flat out, well, sucked. You can't go from talking to everyone at every tweet and talking every single day to just cutting off communications. Or can you? I mean, in theory, anything's possible and you can do it. It's a matter of weighing the repercussions after it. And I'd say Bioware made a pretty safe gamble. For example, Anthem's Reddit was absolutely horrible. Like, daily, just trash posting upon trash posting. Anytime that there was an official update from people like Chad Robertson or Ben Irving, it would get twisted or turned around. I remember there was one post towards the beginning or the first month or so, where Chad Robertson and Ben Irving made a Reddit post that Reddit completely misconstrued and twisted their words, and it was awful. And not to mention all the death threats and the harassment on social media and Twitter and what have you. So obviously, communicating to the public and communicating to the community wasn't working, and just constantly doing it wasn't going to change that. So while cutting communications sucked, and it left a very deafening silence, it has slowly but surely worked. 
To do a quick segue, the reason why I'm making this video is actually because I was listening to Internet Historian's video on No Man's Sky that released a few weeks ago. A link to that video will be in the description below because I am a No Man's Sky fan. And as I was listening to the video, I kept thinking, okay, let's replace No Man's Sky with Anthem. And suddenly I couldn't tell the difference between the two. Now granted, there are some obvious differences, and no, I don't mean gameplay, I mean actually how things transpired, but you guys get the point. The nuts and bolts were there. And it's funny because now Sean Murray and No Man's Sky are now regarded as one of the greatest comeback stories of gaming history. As a matter of fact, I saw a commenter not long ago say to me, oh, well, all Anthem needs is Sean Murray. Well, it wasn't, but two or three years ago, people were wishing him to hell and death threats and what have you. So how did the most hated man in the video game industry, more or less, go from that to this? Now, like I said, I do recommend you going and watching Internet Historian's video. A link to that will be in the description below, though I will be using the main points of that video in this video. As some of you may recall, it wasn't too long ago that Sean Murray actually reached out to the Anthem game team and the Fallout 76 team and offered his two cents about what they should do when it came to communicating with their communities. A little background, when No Man's Sky first released and it was met with utter... Hell, Hello Games and Sean Murray did attempt to communicate with their audience. The Reddit was just as toxic as Anthem's, if not more so, and death threats were being leveraged against him and all sorts of harassment and social media and blah blah blah. Is this sounding familiar to anybody? Anyways, what the game basically did, this small indie studio, was cut off communication altogether for about two years, and they would only come forth and give game updates or communicate with the community, and very sparsely at that, when there was an update or a patch. Hmm, that kind of sounds like Anthem's community cortexes, right? Well, slowly but surely, everything started dying down for the game, and obviously the player base shrunk up to a abysmal few thousand a day at most, similar to what Anthem's experiencing right now. Now, there's an interesting quote from Gamer Revolution, and the snippet from the article reads, According to Murray, the social media silence lasted about two years, and the team didn't talk to the game's community at all for about three months of that period. When Hello Games did talk, it was directly to fans through updates and patch notes. Murray said he came to this decision in part because he believed game journalism's place in the industry isn't what it used to be. In game journalism's early days, it was the main channel for communication between developers and their fans. Now it's much easier for developers to do that directly, meaning game journalism is often more reactionary. And that couldn't be more true. On top of the Reddit and social media harassment, No Man's Sky received its fair share of flack from gaming journalists or YouTubers or whatever you want to call them. Anytime Sean would make a blog post or statement or Twitter or something, gaming journalists and YouTubers would meme the crap out of it, twist his words, or what have you. Huh, kinda sounds like Anthem. And don't get me wrong, YouTubers had every right to harp on No Man's Sky and Anthem upon their releases. They released in an abysmal state, buggy messes, issues left and right. I'm not saying that that wasn't merited for a time. And again, No Man's Sky has a parallel with Anthem. Lo and behold, any time that there was a major blog post or an update or something, a community transmission, what have you, you could be sure that or in or really would make a post slamming the game. So what do you do when you have a raging fire? You can try and put water on it, which is what they were somewhat trying to do, but at that point the fire was just too damn hot. So at some point in time you just have to stop giving the fire oxygen and let it die. And lo and behold, once the gaming journalists, the YouTubers, and what have you stopped talking about it, Reddit started dying down, it started getting more calm, developers weren't getting harassed on Twitter, and suddenly it was fine. Now obviously people were wondering what was next for No Man's Sky, and obviously now people are wondering what's going on with Anthem. Well, that's when Sean Murray initiated phase two of the plan. Rebuild credibility, put your head down, and get to work. And that's more or less, more like more, what Bioware has been doing for the last few months. They've been communicating less unless there is a major update like Ice Tide, Season of Skulls, Cataclysm, what have you. They've been keeping their head down and getting to work and rebuilding credibility. They also wouldn't get their fans or audiences hopes up by announcing things way too early. And I'm a huge fan of this show, Don't Tell approach. 
Now, after a few months, and more like a year later, No Man's Sky would slowly start releasing major updates and major content updates. For the most part, it would be met with audiences going, huh, alright, that's kind of neat, but no, I'm not coming back to No Man's Sky fully. Alright, said Sean Murray. He went back, put his head down, and Hello Games produced yet another major update, did a bunch of fixes, patches, what have you, and the audience was like, okay, yeah, this is pretty great, this is pretty fun. Still not going to be my main game, still not coming back full time. And once again, Sean Murray said, all right, sounds good. He trucked off, and this happened a few times, and this is what I like to call the Anthem 2.0 slash next parallel. Now, it might be a little bit too early to say that, considering I have no idea, period, whatsoever about what Anthem 2.0 or next is going to bring us, and I have no idea the size of it, though if Jason's article is anything to go by, we're going to be getting new maps, potentially, a crap ton of quality life improvements, and things we've been generally asking for forever. But something like rebuilding a community doesn't happen overnight. Though in that same vein, a community cannot exist in a toxic well, or more like a buggy, incomplete well. So let's break it down really quickly about what Anthem has been doing the last few months, and it has been proven to start working already. The Reddit is no longer a toxic mess. There are actual appreciation posts on there, and it's a mildly enjoyable place to be, believe it or not. And yeah, I never thought I'd say that. Gaming journalists, YouTubers, and what have you have finally jumped off of Anthem's bones, primarily because it's no longer the flavor of the month to hate, and because, believe it or not, there hasn't been anything stated by the developers to twist and turn around and make drama posts. Kind of like what Sean Murray said, that they're more reactionary now than real journalism. And I fully believe that is a very, very, very fair observation, as most of them just read off articles or read off posts, give their reactions as people who have no idea how game development actually works, at least for the most part. That might be a little bit of an overgeneralization, but my point still stands. The community as a whole might be smaller than it was at launch, but it certainly is getting better over time. Now that doesn't stop your average idiot from hopping onto a YouTube video, for example, or even seeking it out and commenting LOL dead game, but the real community, the people who are playing Anthem or looking forward to playing Anthem again when it's in a good state, those are the people who are truly fans of Anthem and want it to succeed. And they've gone from being pretty skeptical and doubting to fairly optimistic and positive. Now, it is still too early to tell how successful Anthem's communication strategy will be until we get the ultimate payoff with Anthem 2.0 slash next. Will they be able to rekindle their audience? Will their marketing strategy be good enough to bring people back in? How will the communication be after launch? It all remains to be seen, but they are setting a pace for a much healthier community development and community engagements as a whole. But what do you all think about Anthem's communication strategy, and what do you all think about what's going on right now in the parallels with it and No Man's Sky? Let me know in the comments section below, as I really do read through all of your comments, and I will reply if there is conversation potential. I hope all of you fantastic freelancers have a phenomenal day as always, and I'm looking forward to seeing each and every last one of you in the next video very soon. And remember freelancers, we are strong alone, but we are stronger together.